I started this research sort of looking to answer the question of how does commodified emotional labor manifest in strip club work. Um, I was really interested in the lines between the performance and the work of it, the job, and then how that spills over into private lives. I didn't realize when I started that uh, a majority of women working in strip clubs in central New Jersey are Eurasian immigrants, mostly Russian immigrants, so that sort of by accident added a whole other layer to the original question. And what I ended up finding was this complicated uh, dialectical relationship between this version of sex work um, and the immigrant experience and all the layers of inequality and um, social stratification within that. I would argue that a lot of the identities, the personal identities of the women in this research um, were shaped just as much by their ethnicity, by their immigrant status, as they were by their sort of gender roles in the workplace. We do what's called participant observation, which means, um, in this case, sitting in a strip club by myself and just trying to be as much in the culture without disturbing it as you can. From there, I establish relationships and then was introduced to other people through them, through these kind of key informants, we call them, um, and started doing individual interviews outside of the workplace. When I started the research, I had all these questions about sex. I wanted to know, you know, how do you feel, about, how do you sort of make sense of the sex of this? Um, and then I, I realized very quickly that no one ever talked about sex. <laughs> Working in a go-go bar has nothing to do with sex for most of these women. I came across more and more of these sort of life history narratives about um, identity and nationalism and this sort of survival story of coming to America and uh, having no one to rely on and how you sort of make sense of that and work your way through it. The best thing anyone said to me was one of the first women I met and once she started working at the strip club she was explaining how her sort of personality changed and she said she described going back to the Ukraine for the summer to see her family and how she would be walking down the street and she just wasn't shy anymore like she she described it as being more open more confident and she could just walk down the street and say hi to people with no makeup on and this was like such a such a big jump for her um, which she attributed entirely to working in a go-go bar and uh, her friend was sitting next to her while she was telling this story and her friend interrupted her and said she has that American smile now and I just thought that was incredibly complex when you think about it you know that she's named it this American thing and it's also something that she learned uh, in a strip club <laughs> doing work you know but uh, I thought it was beautiful my advisor for the project was Rob O'Brien, who I had taken several other anthropology classes with. He sort of has a gender and sexuality studies focus, and uh, we always got along. So I, I remember I, I had had like seven cups of coffee one morning, and I saw him in class, and I sort of proposed this project to him, and was like, Rob, I got this great idea for a thesis. I want to study strippers, and he kind of gave me that look he often gives me of like, oh god, here she goes again. But the greatest thing about him is that he can take my very emotional kind of human investment and turn it into something uh, intellectually powerful. Probably in any discipline, although anthropology is definitely the coolest major. Um, the, I think the opportunity to do the research before you get to grad school is, is pretty invaluable. I would recommend it highly.